Six-cylinder motorbikes were always exclusive commodity. They used to come in boxer or in line setup, and it seems like the latter is what motorcycle world perceives ultimate rarity. Quite a few manufacturers took on producing a thrilling inline six over the years, but only two became renowned enough to be considered iconic. Kawasaki Z1300 and Honda CBX1000 are probably the two most of us think of when inline six bike engines are considered. You could argue about the styling or performance of aforementioned machines, but you won't argue the interest and admiration those usually evoke. Therefore, a couple of decades later, Suzuki also became tempted of reviving so-called Regal motorcycle engine. In year 2005, during Tokyo Motor Show, Suzuki unveiled their unexpected but very exciting concept called Stratosphere. Boy, how breathtaking it must have been to see a 21st century iteration of a six-cylinder engine in a motorcycle. Taking a closer look at the bike, you notice very unusual styling. This is both by today and contemporary standards. Very flat seat and a tank made an impression of plank which combined with two-colored appearance scheme guarantees that no confusion with any other motorcycle can be made. Seems like Suzuki wanted to create something very original and at least a bit futuristic, and perhaps they achieved that, but did the bike look good? I'm not entirely sure. Nevertheless, practicality side of their new concept was seriously well thought out. Take a look, for instance, at detachable side panniers and how smart the mounting points were hidden. They must have planned the Stratosphere to be marketed as some sort of hyper-exclusive Tora, because apart from luggage boxes, it was also equipped with adjustable handlebars and electrically adjustable windscreen. This, of course, isn't anything new for Suzuki, as old GSX 1100F had that feature too in mid-80s. LED headlights for 2005 was definitely a fresh idea, but the real killer for those days was built-in GPS navigation system. Now that's what I call a proper touring gear. Suspension met the standards of the era. Upside down forks at the front and central shock at the rear. Radially mounted calipers and quirky looking discs with laser cut paths for elimination of water and dirt again show the concern for everyday usability. You might be thinking that's the end of really interesting goodies on that bike, but the really cool stuff starts now. Stratosphere got an amazing LCD dashboard display showing data in full color. This is the number one 21st century tech feature that comes to mind at first glance on the dash. Electronics of this bike could surprise you even today, as the gearbox for instance operates both as classic manual and the full automatic when rider wants it to. All the aforementioned gizmos made a great concoction, however, the best part was obviously its engine. The numbers I'm about to mention here were never confirmed by any dyno testing, but Suzuki claimed pretty spectacular figures, especially when beginning of 21st century is concerned. Six-cylinder inline mill, powered by electronic fuel injection, was rated at whopping 180 horsepower, and that's a good one, because it's more than Hayabusa had on offer. For this type of design, liquid cooling and 24 valves is the only way to go. Thanks to extremely well-flowing stainless exhaust system, Stratosphere pumped out 130 Nm of torque available at very low RPM. Just imagine what riding of this stupidly powerful and incredibly smooth bike would be. Sadly, I ask this for a reason. Suzuki Stratosphere, although fully functional and road-ready, was never introduced for sale. This is unfortunately a common denominator for many breathtaking creations that look so promising. Year 2005 was in general very good for Suzuki, let's just recall their GSX-R1000 K5, which by many is regarded as the best Jigsaw ever made. So why Stratosphere ended up as a whimsical concept that faced oblivion? It's hard to point out just one reason, most probably it was a combination of many. Rumor goes that slightly revamped Stratosphere was meant to enter the arena in 2008, but big financial crisis that spread all over the world a year earlier buried this idea forever. As always, thanks for watching, until next time.